This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you how I sand and finish my tables. Uh, I'll be demonstrating on this epoxy and English walnut table, but the same process could be applied to any type of wood table. Enjoy. I chose to demonstrate on this black epoxy and walnut table because black epoxy is about the hardest thing to finish when it comes to eliminating all the really fine uh, sanding scratches. So if it works on this, it should work on your project. You can see here, I uh, start with a little pencil grid and just push hard enough. You don't want to dent the fibers, but you want to cover everything so you can see where you've sanded and more importantly, where you haven't sanded. I'll give a brief disclaimer that the quality of your finish in large part is going to be in the quality of your tools. Uh, not to say you couldn't use a cheaper sander and cheaper sandpaper. Uh, you don't need to use a Festool. There's other good sanders out there. I've heard Merco makes good ones. But uh, I'm using this Festool sander. Uh, it really does give a, f a lot finer sanding pattern. It doesn't show the scratches nearly as much as like a box store sander that you might get at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, so you don't have to use it, but it does make it a lot easier. You probably noticed that I'm going a lot faster than you normally see me sand. And this is to prevent any uneven sanding since the epoxy is so much harder than the wood. It's really easy to create a little lip there where the epoxy meets the wood. When you're doing these epoxy tables, no matter how good of a job you did with the pour, you're going to get some tiny little pits left in there. And as the last step, the last thing while I'm finishing, I'll fill them with a CA glue and an activator. And this stuff hardens in just a few seconds you can sand it. A lot easier than having to wait another day uh, after filling it with epoxy. And these are just filled with a tiny little awl, and that helps get in the tiny little cracks there. You just hit them with the activator, and it says 30 seconds, but really in about 10 seconds you can sand these flush. And just like the epoxy, it is harder than the wood, so you want to go pretty fast. And uh, I'm going to show you how you eliminate some of the problems that can come with moving the sander so fast. Uh, the main problem with that is that you get what's called these little pigtails and you can see these little swirls there look just like a little pigtail and that comes from moving too fast. If you can keep your sander dust free is going to help you the most with that and I keep my air on hand so I can just blow it off and also wiping down the epoxy with the microfiber in between passes is going to really eliminate those. But do not move on to the next grit until you get all those pigtails out of the way. And that can be a little frustrating, kind of hard sometimes to do. But uh, don't step on to the next grit until you get that completely eliminated. If you are using the router to round over the edge of your table, I like to do it after the 100 grit. So that way the table is perfectly flat, but you can still come back and sand out any of the little fine scratches left by your router on the uh, surface of the table. It's really tempting, especially I think for new woodworkers, I know I was guilty of this, to start skipping grids to say, well, why can't I go from 100 straight to 150? Or why can't I go from 100 straight to 180? Uh, it does make a big difference, um, especially with this black epoxy, you're really gonna see those fine scratches in there. So don't skip any grits. I know it's frustrating, but uh, you wanna hit them all and it'll really show on your final product. Uh, I don't have the science behind it, but I have a lot of trial and error with it and it does make a big difference. And I did want to mention, uh, I've tried a lot of different sandpapers. This cling spore paper is kind of my go-to right now. Um, the box store stuff, like a Diablo, I don't think is the highest quality. But uh, Festool is okay, just doesn't seem to last as long as the cling spore. So that's the type of paper that I prefer to go to. It's also a little less expensive. Once you start getting up to this 220 grit is when the sanding pattern really starts to get eliminated. And it'll start to look really nice. And hopefully you've done your job getting rid of those pigtails because this is where they're going to become really evident if you didn't get rid of them. But you can see there, no finish obviously on there, but it does look pretty uniform. So we're looking good so far. Our last grit we're going to do is this 320 grit. And you see there that actually is Festool paper, not the cling spore. This is where it's going to really clog up your sandpaper if you don't wipe it off every couple seconds. So this is why you really see me wiping it off every couple passes and uh, hopefully keep it all clogged free otherwise you'll get a lot of those little pigtails. Once you feel like you really got it good I blow it off with the air hose here. It's also a good idea if you have some fluorescent lights to really look closely on there because that's when you're going to see the flaws because a lot of those will show up more uh, after the finish is on but I felt very confident that we got all the little swirls out of there so I'm going to get it ready to finish. I had one table that after I got the finish on, there was some greasy handprints in it. And I don't know that it was just from regular hands. It uh, was with one of my resin workshops. So could have been a student, but I think it was just my own greasy hands. So that's why I'm using these nitrile gloves here to move it around once it's completely ready to finish. 
The finish I'm going to use is called Osmo Poly X Oil. It's a design for hardwood floors. I've used a lot of different ones. Um, some I've used Odie's, different types of Osmo. The old Osmos didn't work too well, and this one works really well for the epoxy. It's not quite as durable as like an Odie's oil. Uh, it is a hardwood floor finish, so it is quite durable, but just not quite as much as the uh, Odie's oil that I've used in the past on some projects. And if you've used Osmo in the past, this one was a little different. I was a little confused. I had a friend of mine, James, over at Lux Edge kind of schooled me up on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trowel it on, then I'm going to buff it in with this white pad. That's a 3M white pad. Uh, you can also use an orbital sander. I've used that uh, quite a bit in the past, but this is just a really nice uh, buffer polisher. And the difference with the old formula is that you don't wipe this one off when it's done. It'll be just a little bit tacky there. So you want to buff and buff and buff until you don't see any swirls. So there's just nothing left. And I'll show you here in a second how I'll flip the pad to get that last little bit off. But you want to buff and buff and then just leave it. And so you'll see that here in a second a little bit better. But using the little piece of the white pad to buff on the end grain and on the sides here too. One thing that can be a pretty hard lesson for new woodworkers, I know I made this mistake one time, is you want to, new woodworkers will want to finish one side, leave it overnight, and then come and turn it. But what happens is the wood will absorb some moisture in the air, and it'll actually cup and bow on you overnight, and um, it's a, not a fun fix to have to make. So you want to finish both sides as soon as you can, and that's why I have those towels on the underside and why I finish the underside first. And if I didn't mention, this is just a Bondo trowel that I'm using. You can also use a credit card. I used to use that quite a bit. Or you can just buff it straight on with your buffer or orbital. And don't rush this here. This is where you can go really slow. You're not putting any scratches into the wood or epoxy with this white pad. You're just going to really work this uh, Osmo into the wood nice and slow. And here's the key to this Osmo is you flip this pad over to the clean side and then you're just gonna keep buffing until you don't see any swirl marks left. So you're just gonna buff and buff and buff with this clean side and then leave it. Don't touch it, don't do anything. It'll be tempted to touch it, but don't. And it'll, after it cures overnight, it'll be just a perfect finish. And after you buff it for quite a while and you feel confident, it's best just to walk away. And you'll see me wipe the side down here. It's not really ideal. The finish doesn't look any different. You just won't get as much protection if you wipe it off. So that's how I keep uh, the sides looking completely uniform. And you'll see here that the sheen looks a little uneven. It doesn't look great, but this is how it's supposed to look. After it cures overnight, it'll look a lot better. After you let it dry overnight, you want to come back. And I've found 600 grit to be a really good uh, grit to sand this with. It will clog up that paper even more so than before. So you have to really constantly be blowing it out and wiping it down, but 600 grit. And then you're going to come back and do the exact same process as you did before, where you're, you're going to just um, trowel it on and buff it till there's nothing left. If you're super observant, you'll notice this is not the same table. This is though made out of the exact same wood from the same tree and the same epoxy. It's a, it was a match set to this table. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate on a little bit larger surface, but the same process, you just trowel it on, buff it off and let it dry overnight. And when you come back, it should look really nice. The last thing that you can do to really even it out, and it's not entirely necessary, is using their liquid wax cleaner. And this, I just buff it on. Um, it'll be kind of a, leave it a little bit greasy, but just hand buff it on with a microfiber towel, wipe it off, let it dry for a few minutes, and it'll really even out any, any unevenness. And this is also a good cleaner. It'll fill any little micro scratches once you have this in your home and have been using it a little bit. So it's a good all around cleaner to help kind of rejuvenate it too. After you get this on there, that is the last step and you are completely done. You got a professional finish in a garage with no dust marks. Uh, it really is as easy as I made it look. I tried to get all the different angles so you could really see how nice this finish is. You get a pretty nice sheen. If you want more of a sheen, you can keep adding coats. Um, overall though, this table turned out really well. Um, you can see here as I come around, it was a slightly transparent epoxy which shows even more scratches, but um, finish ended up really nice. No swirls, no dust pits, no, no anything really. Just a nice even satin sheen. I will say about the highest sheen you could get is maybe a semi-gloss. You're not going to get it all the way to gloss, I don't think. Uh, you can go more of a matte finish than I did here if you really want to. Um, so really kind of a matte to a semi-gloss at the most, but I think it makes best as a satin finish. 
Oh, here's the bigger table I did. Uh, I did three coats on this one to bring up a little bit more sheen, but same thing, just a really nice even sheen. I really appreciate you watching this week's video. If I left anything out or if anything wasn't clear, be sure to ask me in the comments and I'll make sure to get to all of those. And thanks again to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Without sponsors like them, it wouldn't be possible to take the time out of these projects to make these videos. So thanks to them and thanks so much to you. Have a great day.